and welcome to the Rob Call Bottom Up Show. My guest tonight is Ross Rosenberg. He's a therapist in the Chicago area specializing in narcissism, narcissists, borderlines, codependence, and he's the author of the book, The Human Magnet System. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show. Oh, hey, Rob. It's very nice to have me back. Thank you so much. So give us a little more detail about uh, how people can find out about you and, and what your story is, what your website is, what have you. Okay. Well, first of all, my book is called The Human Magnet Syndrome, Why We Love People Who Hurt Us. Um, and that's available um, at my website, um, advancedclinicaltrainers.com. And I also am a professional trainer, and, uh, and I have um, a great deal um, of video, um, training videos available at advancedclinicaltrainers.com. I, um, I own a counseling center in the Chicago area, Arlington Heights, Illinois, called Clinical Care Consultants. And I've been a psychotherapist um, uh, for about 29 years. Okay. And uh, the uh, Bottom Up Radio Show is available at opednews.com slash podcasts. It's on iTunes under my name, Rob Call, K-A-L-L. -L. It's broadcast as a radio show at Progressive Radio Network. And it's also available on this channel on YouTube if you're seeing it on video. So we're here to talk about the biggest narcissist in the world, maybe. Uh, you, maybe you'll correct me on that. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we, I, I've gotten into the whole idea of psychopaths, sociopaths, and narcissists, and trying to understand them. It, it, for me, it started out trying to understand trolls. At first, I thought they were psychopaths, and then I figured out they're probably mostly narcissists. Uh, the people who send me an article that gets rejected and then tell me, this is the article that will change the world. You are ruining the world. Uh, um. But now we're in an unusual situation. It looks like we have a narcissist, um, a malignant narcissist in the White House, the most powerful man in the world. And it looks, and I've listened to a recent uh, interview you did, it looks like it takes a lot of narcissists and people like a, a narcissist to elect a narcissist. So what is it that makes you believe that Trump is a narcissist and is he more than a narcissist? Is he also a psychopath or a sociopath or, or and he's a narcissist? Talk about those things. Well, first of all, when you're talking to a, a, a psychotherapist or a social worker, for that matter, a psychologist or a psychiatrist, um, we, um, we are uh, specially trained and educated in diagnosis. Um, and we cannot come up with a term unless someone fits a specific diagnosis and has all the qualifying symptoms. Um, there's a lot out there where um, people who don't have a clue on what is and what is not any particular disorder are, are, um, are, are out there saying, he's a narcissist, he's a psychopath. Um, so there are, there are uh, objective criterion that, uh, that, um, um, that can be matched to um, um, Trump um, to diagnose him with narcissistic personality disorder. And that is the diagnosis. Um, malignant narcissist isn't a um, diagnosis, although I do use it. Um, he um, is grandiose. He has an inflated sense of his self-worth that does not match reality. Grandiosity is when you um, imagine yourself so much bigger than you really are, and in the face of facts, um, you still um, refute anyone that tries to say you're really not that big. In, um, entitlement is another symptom where you believe you are, um, you believe you are entitled to special treatment, that you should get special favors, you should get in front of the line, you should be given respect when you don't really deserve it. Um, narcissists um, or pathological narcissists um, such as Trump um, feel greatly entitled. Um, they, they are self-absorbed. They can't, they can't stop from thinking about their very favorite subject, which is themselves. Uh, the self-absorption or the self-centeredness um, captivates them. And you know that whenever you're around a narcissist um, and that uh, um, all they can talk about is their own self-worth and how wonderful they are and how um, important they are. Um, you have um, 
um, um, you have someone who constantly needs to bring attention back to them. Um, one of another one of the symptoms is when a narcissist, when someone who is a pathological narcissist gets corrected, they have what we call as a narcissistic injury. Um, corrections, um, even if they're benign, um, they um, put the narcissist into a defensive posture and they feel like they have to attack back. Anyone that, that will correct a narcissist um, and, um, um, and then provoke a narcissistic injury, like Trump, um, become the brunt of their aggression. So narcissists do not take feedback well. They don't. Um, the other symptom is they don't know they have a problem. And this is the most important uh, symptom of all. They believe the world is the problem and they are normal. And so, so the narcissist in, uh, in the face of reality and evidence get lost in their grandiosity, their entitlement, their self-absorption, self their, their, their um, self-importance, and they will fight or refute anything that feels critical, and they attack, they, they, they attack the people who are trying um, to correct them. So I will kind of stop at that just for now, just to give you a chance for any questions. But so, so Trump fits the diagnostic profile as written in the Diagnostic Statistic Manual 5 for Narcissistic Personality Disorder. The DSM-5. The DSM-5. And I didn't go over all, all of the, the diagnostic criteria. But if you look at them objectively, um, then you could derive the diagnosis. But I, Rob, but I have to be um, very clear to you that um, I am ethically obliged to not diagnose anyone unless I meet them. So, um, however, there's enough information out there. Um, and <laughs> I watched, um, when someone is called a narcissist by so many people and they continue to behave narcissistically, that in itself is a sign. Because if you're not a narcissist, you're going to feel bad and you're going to make corrections. You're going to hide it. But he's better than everybody else and there's no problem with him, obviously. Well, so, that's the entitlement and the grandiosity. Right. So one of the things you've said is that it takes people who are like that to elect somebody like that. Talk about that. How did he get elected? Um, I did this video. Um, and by the way, um, I'm kind of breaking a cardinal rule that many um, therapists uh, um, do is we um, is to talk about politics, and but for me, I'm not talking about Republicans or Democrats. I'm talking about uh, what's best for the country, and it has compelled me to speak out. and And I created this video on YouTube. I have, I have a YouTube channel that has 90 videos. And if your listeners are curious, um, it is just go to YouTube and type in Ross Rosenberg, um, and um, you can uh, check those out. But I did a, a video where I explained how Trump stole the election. Um, Tell us here. I'm going to, and I'm just trying to figure out, I'm going to say it in a very concise way, because um, that was a whole hour video. What he did was, um, a narcissist can only get elected if he can um, perpetuate the myths about himself um, and get people to see him in the light that he wants to be seen. Um, and it's really that simple. If, the, if, if people are not narcissistic and people are what I will call mentally healthy um, and they hear about someone who has behaved as badly as uh, um, Trump did, they will have a natural reaction against that person. It's a very, it's actually um, a pretty disturbing reaction. Anyone who lies, cheats, you know, um, is potentially a racist, potentially, you know, someone who, you know, is sexually aggressive. So the person that is going to be in favor of Trump has to have the mindset where they normalize Trump's behavior or compartmentalize it enough so that they can um, psychologically be able to feel like they can vote for them. So what type of person will normalize sexual abuse of women? You know, all, I mean, I don't want to go through all the things. Go, go through some of them. Yes, yeah, sexual abuse of women, um, the allegations of racism, the allegations of lying and cheating 
and um, and bigotry and bullying um, and making fun of um, you know mentally handicapped folks. Um, the type of person that is psychologically healthy abhors it. They actually have a reaction like you know what I call the WTF reaction. I don't know what I don't know what rated rated rating you have on the station. So uh, let's, go ahead. <laughs> what, what the a relationship? But the type of person that can normalize it is the type of person that w will normalize it in their own life. Um, you can only see in others what you can see in yourself. So if you are, you know, um, a, a homophobe, you know, a, a, a gay basher, you don't like women, you think, you know, uh, grabbing a woman's private parts as he um, 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 is okay, or bullying people, and that falls within your kind of psychological domain of, well, that's okay. Um, that type of um, um, Trump's behavior is not going to have the same impact. So my hypothesis is that the people that voted for Trump are people whose, who his message resonated with as being good, and what he did badly was what were things that they were able to dismiss. So, um, so I, I, I suggest that many of uh, Trump's uh, uh, voters, voters um, have personality types similar to him. So he was elected by fellow narcissists. I, I, believe, I believe that and, and, um, it wasn't that he was elected by fellow narcissists. He was, uh, he was elected by people who share his, uh, his values and his morals and his beliefs and are able to minimize it. So yes, I think there's a great proportion of narcissists that, that, would, that would vote for him, but it goes beyond that. I think it's people who, whose value system um, are similar to his value system because there wasn't that reaction of, oh my gosh, this guy is sick. Now, my, there, there have been some other reports that the people who support Trump are authoritarian personalities, people who desire and need to have an authoritarian per person tell them what to do and how to live their lives. Um, and I've theorized in the past that for somebody to support somebody like Trump or somebody who really betrays their interests, right. Uh, somebody has to have a, 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 a kind of a codependent personality. They're, they're victims of abuse and they, they look for abusers to be in their relationships. Well, you know, yeah, 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 I think you're right on track. And so in my book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, it says that um, in any relationship for it to be stable, there has to be um, a balance of personality types. The authoritative narcissist uh, need someone who's passive, compliant, and altruistic, and that is the matchup that makes the human magnet syndrome work. Um, and and that does apply to some degree to the to the election. But I want you to um, I want you to consider something else. Is the term gaslighting? Um, I just did a major yes, yes. Uh, about a major, gaslighting. A, a, ma a major um, seminar uh, called Gaslighting is Everywhere, which is available on my site, my advanced clinical trainer site. Um, gaslighting is, um, is the conscious um, um, dissemination of untrue information or manipulative or um, um, harmful information in order to change a person's um, thoughts about themselves or thoughts that they have. I believe that, that Trump's people um, and, um, were able to get enough false information out, enough uh, propaganda to create doubt and instill paranoia to vilify um, um, his adversaries. And so there was this whole propaganda machine um, running by uh, that Bartman guy, as I understand it, um, that created not only this image of Trump, but also created the counter image of his adversary. And so that the question to ask is, what type of person is susceptible to propaganda like that and the fake news? Well, let's, let's talk a little bit more about gaslighting. Now, the term gaslighting comes from a movie, right? Yes. Talk a little, give, a, give it a little more, give us a little more on gaslighting, because I think it's a really important concept 
And uh, you, how long was your seminar? Uh, it's it's actually a four hour seminar. Okay, so give us a couple more minutes on it, just to <laughs> sure. give us a bit. Of <laughs> yeah. a so gaslighting is a phenomenon where someone tries to um, um, instill um, beliefs, thoughts, and feelings um, into another person with the sole purpose of controlling them. Or to make them feel crazy too, right? But, um, what, they, what they do is they try to make them feel that they have or believe that they have an emotional or psychological problem or a physical problem that did not previously exist, or if it did exist, it wasn't that problematic. And they are actually twisting reality by trying to prove to their, um, um, their victim that they have this problem and this problem controls them. What makes gaslighting insidious is it creates false evidence um, for this problem that um, the victim eventually believes. For example, if someone says to you, um, you're stupid and no one will ever, you'll never get into college and your IQ was always really high. Um, and if you started to believe you are stupid, you start to act stupid. Um, and you, um, or you, you don't excel because you believe the narrative and you never go to college. If that person benefited by you not going to college, then they gaslit you. They made you believe something that was never true, that they, you eventually um, um, adopted as true, and it limited you and made you more susceptible to their control. Gaslighters will twist reality, twist facts, so you can believe something that makes you more dependent on them. Trump, for example. Trump is unbelievably famous for putting out these facts, these tweets that are just not true. Um, to be gaslit by Trump is to believe that what Trump says about the country um, is true, is to believe it, and then react accordingly. So if Trump says, you know, our economy has, you know, I'm just making this up because I'm not an economist, but, you know, you need me because our economy is horrible, and Obama ruined it, and I can come in and I can... Well, I'm sure he did. Um, and in reality, our economy is really, really good. The person who's being gaslit is going to um, take this information because they believe it's coming from a trusted source. And they're going to say, this person has legitimacy. He must only, he only tells me the truth. Why would he lie to me? And they will believe the country is going to hell in a handbasket and that these facts aren't true anymore. And they, and they start to believe the facts that have been implanted, the brainwashing. And that not only makes them closer to voting for Trump, because now Trump has made himself also the victim who wants to save you from this bad economy. Um, it also vilifies his, his, um, his adversary. So when Trump is able to make people believe and instill, uh, um, instill fear and anxiety about things that never happen in order for them to feel dependent on him, he's gaslighted a whole country. And I believe that's how he got elected. He was able to, in this population that was vulnerable, um, to instill this, these, these fears, these anxieties, of, of issues that weren't completely true, were blatantly false or partially true, get people to believe he's an authority, he would never lie, get them anxious and afraid, and that then believe he's the only one that can lead them out of the darkness, he, that's how he, he won the election. He was able to make people believe that Hillary Clinton was evil. I mean, half the people that voted for, for, uh, for Obama, for, for Trump, they said, I would never vote for Hillary Clinton because she's evil. And all they had were the talking points, the gaslit narratives that were fed to them. They really had no idea of really what it is. Well, other well I, I have to say that uh, it didn't take Trump for me to think that little of Hillary. I wasn't much of a fan of Hillary either. And there were a lot of people, I think, who voted against Hillary rather than voting for Trump. But Exactly. And that's the part I don't want to get into because I don't have a, this is not about politics. Okay. And, and I agree. Well, let me ask you this then. Are there other examples in history of oh my gosh, yes. famous figures who have used gaslighting at a public level? Well, let's use Adolf Hitler. 
Um, again, gaslighters um, and malignant narcissists, uh, very similar background, um, they have a level of sociopathy or they're, uh, where they can lie without ease and, um, and uh, not feel bad when they hurt people. Um, what they do is they rise to power when things are going really badly by pointing a finger at the power structure in place um, and saying they're bad and I could help you. And then it's all about propaganda. They're bad because of this. They're bad because of that. So if we look at Adolf Hitler, it was post-World War I. Germany was in the tanks. It was a horrible depression. And he and his propaganda machine, Goebbels and everyone, and, um, um, were able to put together this fake news, this propaganda about all the woes and all the problems with Germany, the motherland, were caused by you know, the Kaiser and the Jews and the, you know, the, the, the gays and all these people. And he were, was able to get people to believe information that wasn't true. That's the gaslighting. Um, propaganda that is meant to change people's minds and invoke fear, anxiety, and paranoia in order for you to feel closer to someone who's trying to control you is gaslighting. Yeah, but is, is it another aspect of it, the, the kind of effort to make you feel like you're going crazy that kind of takes you and destabilizes you, makes you question your own self and your own reality and your own ability to make decisions? That's another form of gaslighting. Uh, so so you're, you're, t you're asking me in, in history, um, has there been other um, gaslighting on a major uh, front? You know, with Stalin, uh, Mao Zedong, uh, um, um, Hitler. Um, when you are creating facts that run contrary to evidence and getting everyone to believe things are really bad, you're instilling fear, anxiety, craziness, and then you portray yourself as a savior and they have to be, um, give you complete alliance. You've now gaslit a whole country to believe um, something that never existed and now they're dependent on you and you've taken away their power. What you're talking about is more of the gaslighting that's on an interpersonal relationship. That if, um, so let's say a person like Trump or another person was in a relationship and they wanted to control someone, they'd want to make that person feel like they're crazy, they're ill, they can't control themselves, and to turn them against themselves so that they can feel, um, uh, they can identify the gaslighter paradoxically as the one that's going to keep them safe thereby isolating themselves and, and, and keeping anyone that can help them away from. Okay. Now, now you, you've mentioned malignant narcissism. Uh, how's that different from regular narcissism? Um, there are, um, I talk about this in many of my seminars, particularly my uh, six hour seminar, pathological narcissism. Um, so if we understand that the, the, the diagnosis is narcissistic personality disorder, there are subtypes um, that um, are not li literal diagnoses. So th there is what I call the, the garden variety narcissist, which is narcissistic personality disorder. Then there is the covert narcissist who actually um, um, can pretend on the outside to be the kind, giving, altruistic person. They can be rabbis and priests. They can be teachers, talk show hosts, on uh, uh, radio personalities, um, therapists, where they, their, their, their value, their, their prestige, the money comes from this personality they created. That's not true. But it's isn't aren't, those, aren't most narcissists putting on that kind of an act? No. no. The covert, the covert uh, most narcissists that you probably, um, no, no. The, the covert narcissists are the ones that in public look don't look narcissistic, but in their personal life, they fall apart. So if you look at some of these fallen evangelists, some of these politicians, you know, you know, um, say, you know, and, and I'm guessing because I didn't diagnose all these stuff, but someone like Anthony Weiner or these other uh, 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 Jim Baker, these are people that had this image of being loving and kind and giving and altruistic, but underneath it, they were nothing more than narcissistically selfish and they got, they got lost in it and it fell apart. The typical narcissists are the ones that you can see when they walk into a room that take over conversations, that know everything, 
that are telling you what you should believe in. That's the garden variety narcissist that we see most often, that most people struggle with. It's the one that everyone knows is full of himself. So, so we have the, the garden variety is one who does not create a facade. No, 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 no. The creating facade requires a uh, um, some a level of psych psychopathy or sociopathy, uh, or just a, a, an ability to lie, cheat, and deceive. That the garden variety narcissist is what you see. I mean, you think of like you know whether athletes, they're singers, they're famous people, or presidents, or politicians. They're all about themselves. They don't really, they get lost in their bigness. Okay. And, um, and then there's the productive narcissists. And these are the ones like Edison, uh, Jobs, Steve Jobs, or Bill Gates. Um, again, haven't met them or diagnosed all of them. <laughs> um, but they, they, be they believe that they can change the world. And they are narcissists. But their brilliance and intelligence is so profound that they can actually create their, um, their grandiose ideas and make them happen. These are the ones that forever have changed our history, but behind the scenes, they're very, very narcissistic. Okay. But they change our lives. And, and if, you, if you look into any of these people and read backgrounds, you know that. And then the last group is the malignant narcissist. And that is um, the most dangerous of all. And that's a combination of regular narcissistic personality disorder um, psychopathy or the, the, the criminal thinker um, and paranoid personality. So it's a narcissist who's highly paranoid who will hurt and kill you if they need to um, and not feel any guilt or remorse. The malignant narcissist is someone who can make you believe that um, you are Hitler um, uh, Stalin, Mao Zedong, and so many, Gaddafi and whomever, they make people believe that they care and they want to take care of them. They want to take care of the country and, and the, and, or uh, Castro. And, and, and they cast themselves as part of the downtrodden. And once they get into power, they will do anything to keep it. And that's where the paranoia um, and, and the sociopathy comes in. So People say, well, is, is Trump a malignant narcissist? That's a tough call because malignant narcissists, I, I think Trump is just not smart enough and calculated enough um, to be a malignant narcissist. I think he has people working for him. I think Trump is just a buffoon who just kind of says shit without thinking about it and, and, and has had people and been able – to spin everything. Because if you ever listen to Trump for any period of time and it's not scripted, he doesn't really make sense. He literally doesn't make sense and he can't keep a conversation. And his spin doctors, whether it's Bartman it's and his- It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great in the, it's, in the bigness of it. And, 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 it, and it goes back to who are the people that voted for him? And where I got myself in a lot of trouble with my YouTube video because I pissed off half the world, it seems like. The people that voted for Trump are the ones that are susceptible to listening to someone that makes no sense and believing that they're good. So, so this whole malignant narcissist thing, um, I think Trump's um, skill was getting really good people to do the groundwork because um, – and knowing how to manipulate others. So yes, he yeah. could be a malignant narcissist, but I don't know if he fits according to the definition as I understand it, but he's pretty scary. Okay, so the other side of the malignant narcissist is the people who have a relationship with the malignant narcissist. What's the profile of them? So the malignant narcissist in the real world in a, in a romantic relationship, um, they're the ones that um, they portray themselves as you know, you know, the victim. Um, the, the, you know, the one that's had, you know, a, a life of hard knocks and they, that whole persona endears them to um, someone, a potential lover who usually is a codependent because that's what the human magnet syndrome says is you unconsciously are attracted to your opposite. And because they're narcissists, see sociopaths, this is the difference of a sociopath and a narcissist. This is why Trump is not a uh, sociopath. Sociopaths don't want relationships. They don't have a need for relationships. 
the only relationships they have are ones that are fake and are choreographed so that they can seem normal in the world. Narcissists want to be loved. They want to love people. And they do love people, but it has to be as the great narcissist above. So Trump, um, Trump um, has these relationships, wants people to love him. He loves people that love him. He's got too much of that narcissism going on to, 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 to be diagnosed as a, a sociopath. But I'm not sure if I asked your question, answered your question. So could you answer, ask that again? The question is, certain people get, fall into relationships with malignant narcissists. Yes, okay. What does it take for a person to be, get into that kind of a relationship and embrace it and accept it and it, get, it goes, get lured into it? It goes back to the human magnet syndrome. It just, um, if, you are, if you are an adult who was raised by a pathological narcissist, anyone who identifies themselves as codependent or what I call now self-love deficit disorder, but if you identify, or if you are codependent, you were raised by a narcissist, and in your very early part of your life, you came to understand that you're only as good as how well you take care of someone else who needs all the attention. That was, um, that was brandished, that was, um, th that was burned into your psyche. So by the time you come to an adult, you believe your, your self-worth is only um, to help others um, and you only know what to do with a narcissist. So fast forward, when adults meet each other, there's chemistry. And the chemistry is, just makes you feel like this person's right. If you're a codependent and you meet a narcissist, there's going to be chemistry. And every codependent will tell you they always fall for the bad guys. If you are a codependent and you meet another codependent, there won't be chemistry. They'll feel, too, they'll feel like they're, they're, they're like your brother or your sister, or there's, there's just no match. So the person who's going to fall for the, the, the malignant narcissist is someone who is going to, it's like a dancing couple. If someone's going to lead the dance, you need a follower. And that's going to be the codependent, the person who is gullible, who doubts their own reality, who believes that their only way that they can ever feel good enough is by taking care of someone at the expense of themselves. Those are the people that fall prey to all forms of narcissism. And, and the malignant narcissists are the most dangerous because they're consciously kind of lying and deceiving you. So are there different population demographics? Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think about how this ties in with politics. Uh, or, or if a politician is going to come across that way, who is the potential voter who is going to embrace him or her? Okay, well, let me start off by saying I think most politicians are narcissists. That, that, the, that the career itself relies on a personality type that craves um, attention by getting people to like you. So if you think you, so if you have this personality trait, um, you're going to, um, you're going to um, identify with a job that makes you, uh, that requires you to get people to like you. And if you're good at it, you run into politics. You know, as I, I asked my son, who uh, <laughs> for a short period of time was uh, um, majored in political science, and I said, Ben, you can never be a politician. You have too much of a conscience, you're too empathetic, and you don't lie. People will like you, but you'll never get a lot of people to vote for you. You're not, you're not uh, um, um, deceptive enough. So thankfully, he changed his mind and is now a psych major. But <laughs> um, it's that type of person. Um, is going to gravitate towards that type of job. I mean, think of what job, what, other, what, what type of job is it where you're always reinventing yourself based upon what you think other people's need, need of you so that you can have a position of power that, that theoretically represents people, but always is about that you represent yourself and your ability to get elected to your next election. The narcissists in our society now know how to play that game to rise to power that it, this is, it is, our politics is rigged against honest people and codependents because the only one, that, you have to know about backbiting and spinning and gaslighting. So I believe that most, most politicians have a narcissistic side. It's about how narcissistic are they. So I, I, wait, I'm just to pursue it a little bit more. Uh, if, 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 a, if a narcissist is trying to identify a support base, 
right? What people? What demographics? What population? Well, they're not. They're not going to pick this whole this whole thing about narcissist codependent thing. Now, narcissists don't think that. That the, they don't think. Uh, the, the human magnet syndrome, in, in fact, um, the, the people that dislike my book are narcissists. If you ever go on Amazon, I got like a 4.3 out of 5 rating. rating. All my one stars are, are narcissists. They just hate it. They don't want to hear about this bullshit BS um, codependency stuff. They just want to know what, what, what do they need to do to make their constituents believe that they can represent them and get them to, to um, vote for them. That's the sole job of a politician is to figure out how to get their potential voters to vote for them. If you're not a pathological narcissist and you're a good guy, and there are many, many, many politicians who are like that, at least in the beginning, you go in with the idea of changing the world and bills and all that stuff. But, um, but you, want to, you want to craft an image of yourself that resonates to your voter. Okay, so what are some warning signs that a politician is uh, leans towards the pathological narcissist side? And then what are some signs that a politician is a good guy? Well, the signs uh, that, that lean towards narcissist side is that uh, um, all of the, their choices that they pick are in order to, um, uh, for election results, um, are, are connected to what, consti- uh, what um, um, how, I mean, I forgot what it's called, but um, I, um, these these politicians they connect to the data that you know people are always running on what people think about any given subject, and their positions. The, the polling. Polling, yes. Uh, their positions are based upon polling. The narcissist is going to base their positions on polling. The person who's not narcissistic is going to base their positions on their constituency and their and and what they believe is right or wrong, which means. They will take, they will periodically take hits, um, um, and um, and vote against popular initiatives um, because it doesn't feel right. And as I said, the way that our politics is 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 um, runs now, those people tend to not get elected again. Yet, yet Trump tried to sell himself as a populist who did not go with the polls. Mm-hmm. Well. Um, he well, and I don't know about that. Oh, I, I, I would, I, I disagree. I believe he had very, very smart people that knew the polls, that knew the polls better than the pundits and the pollsters. He um, did cite the polls. That's true. He did cite but them. He, but the polls. I mean, we're, we're talking about. You can do both. You can track the polls and cite them when they're for you, and then attack them, which is pretty much what he does with a lot of things. But what what I'm saying, you're right. But what I'm actually saying is. I'm, not, I'm going off, I'm talking about going off the grid and finding people who can get the, 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 try to tap into what people are thinking, where the polls didn't do it. So their own polling. So, so someone who knows what West Virginia coal mining uh, communities want to hear, someone who knows what the Indiana rural people want to hear, uh, someone who's connected to Utah, not Utah, uh, uh, you know, South Dakota, um, and what they want to hear, and the, 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 and they're all focused on specific narratives. Um, so that's I'm talking about psychological polling. You figure out what people want to hear. You craft your message. And 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 Trump people were brilliant on that. I'm not so sure Trump did it. Is they knew what people were upset about, and that was their message. Um, the 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 person who's not narcissistic, who wants to be elected again, uh, is. is doesn't happen. Um, it's going to stay true. Well, I, I would say that, that Bernie Sanders comes to mind. He was the guy who would say okay. to the uh, anchors, "This is not what we should be talking about. We should we should be talking about these issues." And and Bernie's an interesting one because I think Bernie's on the narcissistic side too. But again, yeah. but 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 we let's not convince. Let's this. not let's not confuse politics and narcissism. You can be liberal. I'm liberal, um, or you can be conservative. Um, those are political ideologies, um, and you can ha- um, that are independent of mental health. Um, so you can be completely liberal, like Bernie is, um, and then be so caught up in yourself and the mission. So his mission was to change the world and get people to vote for him, 
his ideology was a lot nicer. So, so you can be, um, uh, you can be um, um, a, a narcissistic Democrat and you can be a narcissistic Republican. Um, or so, so, so your political leanings don't determine your, your mental health. So, some people would argue that, but, but that's what I do. I would wonder what a narcissistic uh, progressive would look like. Oh, I don't know. All I know is all narcissists are the same. And whether it's, a, um, whether it's someone who's a bleeding heart liberal, um, the, um, they want to change the world and make everyone take care of the rest of the world, whatever their, their agenda is. But they want to be in front of it. They want to be the spokesperson. They want to be out there in the news, in the limelight. They want to be, I mean, that's the narcissist, narcissism. So the, the political side might not feel narcissistic, but the narcissist can be a therapist, can be a teacher. And okay, so uh, you got narcissists and you got authoritarianism, and then you got authoritarian people who are the authoritarian, and then you have authoritarian personalities who need an authoritarian. Uh, how do you separate that out, the, uh, if you can? I can't, well, I can, I mean, um, easily. An authoritarian is someone who, and correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, is someone who needs to tell everyone what to do and have everyone follow the rules. Or, right? or be the person who the authoritarian tells. That's also an authoritarian personality. Okay, someone who wants everyone to follow rules and to listen to them. Or no, listen. no, you've got the authoritarian who wants to tell everybody what to do, but okay. the authoritarian needs people with authoritarian personality who are the people oh, who okay. are okay. The, the, the submissive ones, the passive ones who need okay. an authoritarian to tell them what to do. See, see I'm confusing authoritative and author, authoritarian. Okay. Authoritative is what I described, someone who's... Um, so, the person that wants to tell everyone what to believe, the authoritarian or the authoritative person, the person that has to be in control, the authority, um, um, those, those are narcissistic qualities. Narciss I mean, because a person who is not narcissistic, um, by the very nature, is reciprocal and mutual in relationships. Um, a codependent is all about giving everything to everyone else, being up, wishing that it would be equal, but it's not, and they stay in the relationship. A narcissist, um, and it, this is explained in my Human Magnet Syndrome book, the narcissist, it's all about them, and everything needs to be for them. A lot of people are in the middle, um, and, um, and they don't want someone telling them everything, and they don't want someone um, um, telling them how and what to do or mandating it. So I think that the authoritarian person is on the narcissistic side because he doesn't want to engage in a dialogue in which other people's point of views can be considered. So, um, so the authoritarian and authoritative person uh, fall on the narcissistic side of the continuum. Okay. Absolutely. They're just the, the people who were, grew up in this, uh, narcissistic relationships who did not become the dominating narcissist. There's different types of narcissists. I mean, there, there is the, the dominating narcissist where we see a malignant narcissism. There is the covert narcissist who is like the guy who's your, your priest or your rabbi or your therapist who plays the role of super sweet and wants everyone to love them, but in the background is a selfish son of a bitch. But what unites all, all of them is that they are only for themselves deep inside and the person who's, uh, who is authoritarian or authoritative is, too, um, is more focused on what they want to say or do than others. A person that's not a narcissist and that's not a codependent falls into what I call the healthy or normal point of view is there's give and take. You win some and you lose some. So how do you help out all these codependent people who voted for Trump? How do you help America? Oh, I, <laughs> I, there, I can't. <laughs> you can't? Come on. <laughs> because first of all, if the ones who are fall on the, again, I have a whole, I have a theory in my book, the human magnet syndrome called the continuum of self. I believe there's a continuum and we all fall somewhere on, the self side, which in extreme is narcissists, uh, uh, pathological narcissism, 
or the other side, which is extremist, codependent. We're all somewhere in between. The ones that voted for Trump that fall on the self or the narcissistic side, they're not going to be open to anyone helping them. Remember, the hallmark of narcissistic personality disorder is you don't think you have a problem. Okay. And if you tell someone they have a problem, they get pissed off and they say, no, you're the problem. The, the hallmark of codependency is if you tell someone, you, I think you have a problem, they immediately go to shame, they say they're sorry, and they say, what do you want me to do differently? Um, so the folks who voted for Trump probably not are, are, don't fall too much on the codependent side. They're probably going, because they are resisting reality. Codependents will take on so much reality, they don't know who they are. The ones who, who say, you know, um, you, you, know, you've, you know, you voted for someone who's lying, um, and you voted for someone because of fake news. If you were codependent, you would say, really? What so, news is that? And you would, you would like, you'd sift through it. So I'm at a point now with the people who voted for Trump and who love him, because there's a lot of people who voted for Trump who, to, as a way of, of course. voting against Hillary. But the ones who voted for Trump who love him, I'm really at the point where we're going to tell them to go fuck themselves. And I, <laughs> I don't want to have, I mean, like, shut up. You're an idiot. And uh, <laughs> what can I say? I mean, well, but, but I, you I can. have very little patience with them. And, you know, I have to, some of them are family. Some of them are old friends. But, some of but, them are people I have to deal with. But let me tell you something, is that when you lose your temper and get mad um, with a narcissist, um, it rarely ever works out to your benefit because they thrive on you being pissed off and being angry because they turn it around to, um, to uh, back up their own narcissistic viewpoint. So you can't, you can't get a narcissist to ever feel bad or feel guilty or ashamed by telling them to fuck off or telling them, I don't want to hear you because all you're going to do is convince them that they're right. Can so you I, ever, can you ever make them feel bad or guilty or ashamed? Oh, it's possible, but it, it takes some, I mean, it would, it would, it would take some diabolical psychological training. But it sounds like that's not the strategy anyway. What do no, you, of course what not. What do you do with those people? Okay. I, it's funny. I have like, I told you about my YouTube channel. I have like 90 videos and of all of them, there's like 5 million views. I have one video that has a half a million views and it's called observe, don't absorb. And basically in this video, um, and I, tr I haven't, that's an eight minute version on my, on my training site. It's an hour and a half seminar video, but my whole point is, and it goes back to George Bernard Shaw saying, um, and I got it on the pillow here. Never wrestle with a pig, you get dirty, and beside the pigs like it. Okay. <laughs> Never so, wrestle with a pig, you get dirty, and, and the pigs like it. I like it. And so it all goes down to um, the narcissists. They play dirty. This is what they do. This is who they are. And, and that if you try to take them on and try to be a, um, a force that can hold them accountable, they're always going to win. Muhammad Ali used to do this in the fight. He would get people so pissed off that he would be able to dominate them. Rope so the best, the, best, the best thing you can do with a narcissist is to look at them as just being uh, pathetic and, and what I call observe. Um, watch the narcissist be a narcissist and don't absorb. Don't let them into you emotionally because once they're, they get to you emotionally, you absorb it. Like if you absorb poison, you get sick. But once, once you get upset, then they're in your head. And even if you set a boundary, they're still in your head and they still have power over you. The very best thing you can do with a narcissist um, that doesn't have real power over you is just get them out of your head. And just take away all their power by just watching them be completely um, pathetically narcissistic. When you take them on, they are very crafty at making you look bad to the people that believe them. Um, and you can't win. You're wrestling with a pig. And um, so the best thing to do is hold a boundary with a narcissist. Don't let them hurt you or do things that can be hurtful. And, and stay out of the wrestling ring. So, um, so I have tons of relatives that uh, get around the table and talk about things that I completely disagree with. I just kind of smile and I might say something just to like, um, per, per, per just get them upset and then I'll walk away because but I don't, that's just me having fun. But my point is, I don't 
take on people that have the that are completely incapable of changing their mind. So the basic advice is don't expect to be able to change anybody's mind and don't even try to engage them. Right. Unless it's about a boundary and safety. If a narcissist says, you know, um, you know, you, you know, if it's a friend, a family, a wife, a president, you can't do this and it breaks a law or something, you got to stand up for yourself and you have to fight. But, but everything else, you have to realize you can't win. And just the fact of trying to win gets you into a spot where you embolden them. Trump lives for people um, arguing. He's able to turn that around and make people look bad. Narcissists live for the argument. They they are the pigs in the wrestling ring that know how to wrestle. Best thing to do is take away their power by not letting them bother you. Go on to your life and, and, and just separate yourself from the narcissist. So what advice would you give to people who want to try to neutralize Trump and get rid of him? My advice is to go on my website, Advanced Clinical Trainers, and buy my hour and a half. I'm serious. It's only 40 bucks. It's not like I'm going to make tons of money. But it's to buy this video because it's an idea. That is, I mean, on YouTube, it's eight minutes and a half million people. If you really want to do this, you have to learn a very complicated psychological process that my Observe and Absorb training shows you that is not intuitive. You have to learn to shut off your emotions um, in a... So yes, I think that's the only way that people can change is if they learn. But, but, but wait, I'm, I'm not asking about how to deal with an individual now. I'm asking uh, how with the Democratic Party, how would, oh. how, how as a political uh, movement should people deal with Trump? Okay, well, I'll give you, okay. I'm not a politician, but I have opinions. Okay, I think, I think what, what, what the uh, Democrats should do and is they should let this guy hang himself. Um, they should keep strong, keep everything they're doing, build, build um, a, a central identity that reflects the people they represent, not come up with a candidate that is not reflective of the people, build an identity, get people that eventually, but um, they, sh they should stay strong. And tr Trump's going to hang himself. I mean, he's too psychologically impaired not to. There's That's some, my impression. Oh, it's, it's the impression of anyone that has, it's an impression of many. Um, so I, the Democrats, um, if they're listening, is keep doing everything you're doing. Um, build um, your foundation and, and redefine or super refine your message so that it resonates with the world. Okay, but, now the other side of it is, the world. How, do you, how do you exacerbate States. Trump's, uh, falling uh, apart. Uh, well, I mean, I, got Saturday Night Live having women play the different male roles in the Trump White House. I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> that question implies that that I would do something to hurt someone on purpose, um, and and that that goes against my observe and absorb uh, the way to the way to exacerbate a narcissist. I just had a session an hour ago at 12 o'clock. Is you don't get sucked into the argument, and I told her if you avoid his arguments, you avoid him trying to pull you into feeling scared and nervous. You avoid and you don't respond to his bullying. He will get so freaking angry at you, he won't know what to do. How about the media? How should people who are doing interviews with him look at him and handle him? <laughs> Again, I'm talking way out of my league, but I think I think the media um, needs to understand that uh, um, the, the media, it's all, you know, Rob, it's all business. The media, um, everyone is run by the, 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 the great old dollar. The, everyone's got to get ratings. Everyone's got to get a story. And the only way that the media is ever going to do well is if they can, uh, um, they don't have to worry about that. But th my advice to the media is stop covering this guy because, I mean, for some reason, people are obsessed I know, but, but that's my advice is that, but no, because it's, that's why I said it's about money. Money is on the topic du jour, but the best thing you can do is not cover him because if you say something bad, you're part of the problem that's wrestling with a pig. And if you say something good, so I don't think, I don't think the media would ever listen to me because they would probably go broke. Um, well, I, I guess, you know, so you got to qualify it. They're not going to stop talking to him. So how do they handle him in a way that is going to 
flesh out the, the craziness, which is what the people want to see, really. I think actually to, to the credit of a great, great many media, in fact, the far majority, I think a lot of them are already doing that. Is there, I mean, if you, you look at any place, including a, you know, a reputable news sources, they're out there saying all this crazy shit about Trump. The problem is that does not work with Trump because um, um, the, the media, um, I believe, just needs to do their job and, um, and try to find other important topics that are actually newsworthy. And, and to me, that takes, uh, that's about, that's a moral and that's an ethic, an ethic, an ethical imperative is to, is to change the conversation because the more people talk about Trump, so there, there's a fine line between keeping someone accountable and keeping the reporters on him and then finding something else. I would imagine if, if, the, if the media did what you suggest and withdrew their attention from him, he'd probably start acting out to get more attention. And, and again, going back to the observe, don't absorb technique. Like a little kid, really. <laughs> yeah, but going back to the observe, don't absorb technique, and, it, it, and, and I explained this to my client, it's like a dog that has always been given table scraps her whole life. And at age 10 years old, um, so, um, you decide not to give her table scraps. She will do everything and anything to break you down in order to finally get you to give her table scraps again. Um, and there's a whole behavioral theory behind this. So, so, so let's say we can get the media to like change their focus. Trump will escalate. But if you want, and you observe this and, and don't absorb it, you observe his escalation, his, he's going to escalate to the point where he's going to uh, do riskier and riskier things. Case in point, the allegation that Obama wiretapped um, 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 him. You got the FBI and, you know, and this, that. I mean, that's what's happening. He will hang himself. And the, 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 if, the, if the media was listening, they would assign so many so much media, so much of the media pie to him and move on to other areas um, because he's going to hang himself if given, uh, I mean, it's just, he's just not that mentally stable. No, let's talk about Twitter. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we, then we need to wrap up. Okay. Um, it's a joke. Um, just the fact that this guy tweets um, the narcissism, is that he believes that his Twitter, his tweets are that important. Um, he believes them and he has no idea, which is the, the grandiosity and the entitlement, that he's actually making himself worse. That's his undoing and that's the undoing of a lot of narcissists is that their, their, their grandiosity, their need to, to be in the front and the center um, does not help their judgment of knowing when to do something, when not to. So his, his Twitter uh, tweets are amusing. And if anything, indicative of his, his lack of mental health. Okay. Nothing less than that. Why would anyone um, feel like they have to um, do these 21? Yeah, but that's my, that's my thoughts on Twitter. All right. So we, this has been an interview with Ross Rosenthal. Rosenberg. Rosenberg. I'm sorry. Rosenberg. It's all right. And uh, give it. You've been listening to the Rob Call Bottom Up Show, available on opednews.com/slash podcasts at iTunes and Progressive Radio Network, and on YouTube. Uh, Ross, why don't you give your uh, website? Sure. So, if you guys are interested in uh, some of the information, I have. I have many um, video seminars that are uh, for the general public at advancedclinicaltrainers.com. My book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, Why We Love People Who Hurt Us, it's the same website. Um, I'm on YouTube. You can check out my YouTube videos. And I have a counseling center in Arlington Heights, Illinois, called Clinical Care Consultants. All right. Thank you so much. Great interview. Thank you, Rob. It's been a pleasure. Uh, you take care. and.